strong inroads towards our sustainability goals, and very importantly, cracked the rupees 5 billion EBITDA ceiling for the year. We've also made substantial progress towards unlocking value from our new projects in hospitality, residential, and office real estate at Hyderabad, Bangalore, and Mumbai. The acquisition of the iconic resort property in Lonavra region, the Duke's Retreat, marks our foray into leisure segment. The Duke's, Duke's Retreat has built a very deep connection in, with its guests over the last 40 years, and with its breathtaking views serving as a backdrop, our vision for the retreat involves repositioning it through renovations and expansions transforming it into a luxurious uh, wellness destination that embodies a strong commitment to sustainability. We will be uh, expanding the room inventory by approximately 50 room, uh, rooms over there. At a macro level, the hospitality industry in general, in US, uh, select Euro Europe and Asian regions, has been moving in a very strong and positive direction, with some regions touching record average room rates. The same momentum has also been seen in the Indian industry, with average room rates touching decadal highs, with occupancies also at very healthy levels. Air yeah, traffic in the country has touched a new peak in March 2023, fueled by double-digit growth in domestic travel and recovery of international traffic. International passenger traffic recovery was around 90% uh, to the pre-COVID levels in the month of March. Despite new supply, Office space occupancy in the top six cities remained strong at around 84% as reported by Colliers during the quarter ended March 2023. For Chalet, the robust pickup in demand seen in Q3 of FY23 continued in Q4 of FY23, largely led by corporate travel, mice, weddings, and other social events. Q4 recorded new highs in average room rates at uh, rupees 11,304, which is up by 11% over the previous quarter. Portfolio average room rates crossed 12,000 rupee levels in the month of February. Occupancy improved 9% points Q and Q to 74%, leading to a highest ever quarterly ref par of rupees 8,363. Hospitality segment revenue grew by 17% sequentially to rupees 3.1 billion. Room revenue grew by 23% over the pre previous quarter, while costs remained well under control, resulting in high flow through during the quarter. The portfolio FNB revenue was about rupees 1 billion, which is again uh, higher by 6% over the previous quarter. A bit of hospitality division was rupees 1.5 billion, with the highest ever EBITDA margin of 48%. Consolidated revenue for the quarter was at rupees 3.5 billion, with an EBITDA of rupees 1.6 billion. The EBITDA margin was 46%. This is the highest revenue and EBITDA for the company in a single quarter till date. For the full year, average room rates were again at a decadal high of rupees 9169, with an occupancy of 72%. Hospitality revenue and EBITDA were at a lifetime high of rupees 10 billion and rupees 4 billion respectively, with EBITDA margin at 42%. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to share that on a consolidated level, EBITDA for the company crossed the rupees 5 billion mark, with an EBITDA margin of 43% for the year. Now coming uh, and sharing with you a quick update on our project pipeline. Uh, in the hospitality side of the pipeline, uh, additional 88 rooms at Novotel Pune are ready and we are awaiting the final OC of the building to start commercial use. The new Western high-tech Hyderabad with 168 rooms is in the process of being handed over to the operator this month and will be operational from next month. At Western Mumbai, Pawai, the newly renovated rooms have been handed over to the hotel team in January, and I'm happy to share that the response has been extremely positive over there. In fact, uh, the response at Western um, Pawai, Mumbai, uh, has been uh, very positive and we sort of sort of con confirms our belief in that asset, which is the largest asset in the country. And also, uh, it has uh, reaffirmed uh, the position that we took of changing the brand from Renaissance to Westin around three years back. The project work at the luxury hotel at Delhi Airport with about 400 rooms is as per schedule, with expected completion in the financial year 26. 
The 140 room expansion at Bangalore uh, Marit is in final design stage and we'll be submitting a plan for approval later this month. On the commercial office uh, real estate that we have, uh, our commercial tower at Westin complex provides in the final stage of completion and uh, we should be able to hand it over uh, sometime early next quarter uh, to the leasing team for leasing of the space. Um, after those he's received. However, we already have a, a reasonably strong pipeline of interest for almost about 300,000 square foot on, these, on this asset. At the commercial tower in Bangalore, in the Barrett complex, handover to tenants has, con has commenced. And for the, the mall that has been converted to the office building, uh, the handover to tenants will like, is likely to commence uh, late next quarter. For the residential project of Bangalore, and I think that's the key element of our um, you know, project work that we are having, and it's going to make a material difference to, to our PNL for the next few years. The railroad registration has been received, construction work is on schedule, and the market rollout is scheduled to commence from July of this year. We are happy to share that we have significantly improved our score this year on the Dow Jones Sustainability Index to 43 from last year's score of 31, which, by the way, is a 39% improvement. And we are well above mean scores of uh, the hospitality industry in the DJSI index. Uh, we are also proud to share with you that 75% of our power sourced uh, was sourced through renewable resources for the month of March 2023. And when I say 75% of the power, I'm talking about the full hotel portfolio. Uh, is included in that and none of it was through any green certificates. This is genuine third-party green power that we're using. Ladies and gentlemen, at present, we have multiple projects in final stages of completion with capital spends of over 1,200 crores till date. These assets will start contributing to our PNL in the next few months. In particular, the new hotel in Hyderabad, the residential assets in Bangalore, and the office assets in Mumbai and Bangalore, Bangalore are likely to make material improvement in our financial numbers. As we enter the new financial year, we remain committed to enhancing our operational efficiencies, execution of ongoing projects, and sustaining momentum through both organic and inorganic growth opportunities. On that positive note, I'll now hand over the baton to Melin, who will take you some more financial highlights. Melin. Thank you, Sanjay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As Sanjay mentioned, the company thrived in post-pandemic world and crossed rupees 5 billion EBITDA milestone in the financial year, FY23. The EBITDA and EBITDA margins will improve further with the operationalization of all new investment in commercial office building and hotels. These investments of about 12 billion today are likely to generate a stabilized return of approximately 20% on invested capital. Most of these assets are getting operationalized in FY24. As Sanjay has covered most of the financial numbers, let me give you key financial highlights. Hospitality segment reported the highest ever EBITDA margin for the quarter at 48%, setting a new industry benchmark. Margins were higher by seven percentage points from previous quarter, led by resilient area and prudent cost management. Hospitality EBITDA for the quarter increased by 36% sequentially. Hospitality revenue crossed rupees 10 billion mark for the year FY23. Three of our properties that is JW Sahar, West in Hyderabad, and Novotel Pune reported highest ever revenue and EBITDA for the quarter and financial year. Hospitality EBITDA for the year was 4.3 billion, led by efficiency in two major cost shares, that is payroll at 12% of revenue and utilities at 5.8% of revenue, creating new industry benchmark. Consolidated revenue for the year was 12 billion. Fat of 1.9 billion for the financial year FY23 is a strong recovery from the cumulative losses of 
2.1 billion in the previous two years. EPS was at rupees 9.06 for the financial year FY23. The network of the entity is back to pre-pandemic level at 15.5 billion. Netted of the company increased by rupees 2 billion in the last financial year to 24 billion as at 31st March 23. The company spent 6 billion, which includes capital expenditure of 4.4 billion and acquisition cost of Duke's retreat of 1.6 billion. This was largely funded by internal accounts and working capital management. Out of the total debt of 24 billion, half is allocable to new investments in office buildings under construction, new hotel projects, and hotel expansion. The cost of finance as at March 23 is at 8.75% against 7.5% at the beginning of the year. This is in the backdrop of an overall increase in repo rate of 250 basis points in the same period. The company is expected to convert rupees 12 billion to LRD in FY24, which will reduce the average cost of finance for the company. The company has capex plan of around 6 billion for FY24 for the projects that have been announced till March that are, for the projects that have been announced. This includes capex of 2.8 billion on commercial project including second commercial tower at Pawai. The balance 3.2 billion includes spillover capex of new western hotel at Hyderabad, hotel expansion at Pune, capex on new hotel in Delhi, and expansion of uh, Marriott Hotel in Bangalore. Business is well funded with internal accruals and available lines of credit. This is the first phase of multi-year high growth cycle for the hospitality industry. Now let me give you few updates on Koramangla residential project. The promoters are committed to fund project cost. There has been no new subscription from promoters on 0% non-convertible redeemable preferences during the quarter under review. The total subscription stands at rupees 2000 million and the promoters have given rupees 450 million as interest free ICD as at March 23. We have received RERA approval for the modified, modified development plan based on the internal market assessment done by our residential team. The selling price per square feet is seen upward of rupees 16,000 rupees per square feet of sellable area. The cash generated from sale is expected to be cash and EBITDA accretive to Shanley. With this, let me open the floor for question and answer. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, they will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have a first question from the line of Vikas Ahuja from Antique Stockbroking. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity. I hope uh, you can hear me. Um, because we can hear you, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, first, my first question is uh, regarding the uh, occupancy of southern markets, Bangalore and Hyderabad. Uh, that is, uh, you know, although we have seen a strong uh, pickup in Mumbai and Pune, but uh, those two markets still remain under the below the average. So, you know, how should we look at uh, going forward into FY24? Where do you think, you know, this number can go? Uh, that's uh, my question number one. Because thank you. Thank you for your question. Um, look, uh, Mumbai has done ex exceptionally well with the occupancies uh, in Q4 at 77%. Bangalore and Hyderabad uh, are markets which are sensitive to 
holidays and uh, holiday seasons. Uh, and therefore, uh, in Q4, uh, the start of the quarter was a little slow because foreigners take a little while after the New Year's uh, to come back uh, to travel. Uh, but then subsequently, in the second half of uh, January and then February, were extremely good. In fact, February turned out to be brilliant in all, all our tasks. Um, having said that, I think uh, you will see marked improvement in occupancy of both Bangalore and Hyderabad. Especially Bangalore has seen uh, a, a significant improvement in the last couple of months. And uh, we're very excited about the, the demand pickup and back to recovery in Bangalore. Uh, sure, thank you. Uh, my second question is regarding the seasonality. So, uh, when we go from Q4 to Q1, we normally see a 15 to 20 percent uh, decline in rest park. And it's, uh, as I said, it's largely because of seasonality. So, you know, because we are in a different times now and uh, just, just trying to understand whether we will see the same seasonality this time as well, or uh, you think, you know, demand continues to remain very strong. and and this time, the drop won't, won't be that much. So, because I, I don't want to comment on forward-looking numbers, but look, the, the, the seasonal trends that are typical for India for uh, both business and leisure travel will continue. Uh, the difference could be less uh, this, this time around, but do expect Q1 and Q2 to be always lower than Q3 and Q4. Uh, sure. Sure. Uh, thank you. And my, my final question is uh, on the SNB revenue, which came around mid single digits, while the overall RESPA growth was 25% above on sequential basis. Uh, uh, so, and, I mean, uh, what was the reason for lower uh, growth in SNB revenues? Uh, so, look, the, the growth in SNB revenues between Q3 and Q4 still is 6%. And remember, Q3 came off a high base because that was the period for uh, several weddings, etc., that happened. So it's unfair to compare Q4 to Q3. Uh, and the fact that Q4 managed to report 6% growth on Q3, where the banquet season was at its peak, is itself is commendable. So I see this as a positive. Okay. Okay, but but I think that same applies to the ADRs as well, right? Which was around to ten thousand two hundred, and it moves to eleven thousand three hundred. Uh, but uh, ADRs are driven by by uh, rooms, room demand. Yeah, driven yeah. By the business travelers. Uh, FNB was driven by social events, uh, which are basically locals uh, who who uh, use the auspicious days of weddings to host the events. And both the JW Marriott at the airport in Mumbai and the West in Pawai did exceptionally well with weddings during the quarter three. So coming off a strong base, I think the fact that quarter four has managed to improve improve the revenues by another six percent is quite commendable. Okay, sorry if I can squeeze in one last question. Uh, as we already in the middle of May. Uh, are we seeing any difference now in terms of uh, you know uh, the the occupancies or uh, the the pricing in in different markets whether you know Mumbai has dropped or Bangalore has improved? Uh, are we seeing any uh, stark differences in, from the trends we have been seeing in past two three quarters? And that's about it. Thanks a lot. Because uh, thank you for your questions. Uh, but look, uh, I'm not we're not in a position to share numbers at this this time with you because we've not really. Uh, release those numbers to the market in general, so we're restricted. Uh, as I said, expect Q1, Q2 to be, to, to be lower than Q3, Q4. Uh, uh, my sense is that the gap is not going to be 15%. Uh, it should be a little more balanced in that. We can move on to the next. Sure, sure, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Karan Khanna from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on the best ever quarter. Uh, so uh, you spoke, uh, Sanjay, you spoke about the hospitality outlook uh, for you know SI24 and beyond. But from a strategic perspective, uh, while most of the hoteliers are expanding in tier two and tier three cities and beyond, uh, with smaller hotels, Salis Pipeline is focused on tier one uh, big box hotels. So if you could help us understand more in terms of uh, you know your current model, will, will that work better than expanding in smaller cities but with scale? Hello. 
Sorry, Karan, I was on mute. Uh, th thank you for your question and thank you for the congratulations. Uh, let me just remind you that the last two hotels that we've commissioned or acquired are in tier two locations. Uh, Pune no hotel was in a, in a tier two city, and the recent acquisition of the Duke's Retreat is indeed uh, in a secondary or tertiary market. So uh, I, I, we believe there is uh, strength in some tier two and tertiary cities. And, but we'd like to be very, very careful not to go and increase supply in some of these cities because they come for low base, and if we continue to increase supply, the city itself could suffer. Um, so in both cases, we've actually picked up existing supply as against added supply to these tier two uh, tertiary locations. Uh, but to answer your questions, are we looking at tier two and tertiary cities? Absolutely. And the outcome is in front of you. Sure. Uh, thanks for the clarification. And just continuing on the Duke's uh, acquisition, which has been uh, an opportune acquisition for Chalet, but uh, it also marks your entry into the leisure segment uh, through a smaller hotel. Uh, so is it fair to assume that, uh, you know, right now you're testing the waters in the leisure market and hence you've gone with a smaller hotel compared to your rest of your portfolio? And inherently, as you start uh, witnessing uh, potential turnaround or possible success in the leisure segment, you look to add uh, further hotels in this segment. And if so, which are the markets uh, that you're actively evaluating at this point? So, Karan, we, 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 we are going to stay consistent with our stated strategy that we'd like to be in leisure destinations which are in drivable distance from Mumbai and a couple of other big cities around uh, the country. And we'd like to look at Goa and Rajasthan uh, as the two other leisure destinations that we'd like to focus on. I don't think this strategy has changed for the last three, four years now. Uh, and uh, what we've done at uh, Dukes is consistent with that. We continue to look for opportunities in Goa and uh, Jaipur, et cetera. As in when we have some opportunities, we'll look at them. This is not by design that we got Dukes first and we wanted to test waters. It's just that we were able to execute this first. Sure. Uh, on commercial real estate, you have closer to 2 million square feet that's hitting the market in FI24. And uh, if I look at the outlook for commercial real estate, uh, doesn't seem as positive when we look at some of the incumbents in Bangalore even suggesting possible extra exits uh, than contractual in the year. In that context, I wanted to understand your standpoint on uh, CRE demand for Chalet and uh, visibility in terms of uh, leasing uh, uh, potential tenants or uh, opportunities that you're seeing. And uh, Milan, if you could also talk about the pending CAPEX for uh, the four signals towers in Bangalore and Bombay. So, Karan, uh, I, uh, I don't think we have any major concern on the... Uh, it's 1.5 million that's coming in play in, in this year, not 2 million. Uh, roughly around a million of 0.95 in uh, Bangalore and 0.78 uh, in, in Mumbai. Um, I don't know whether you've seen a recent report, I'm trying to dig that out whilst we speak, uh, which had given, uh, it was I think a TV uh, report that had come out on the television and CNBC, where they'd given the leasing traction of big cities in India. Uh, and you'd be surprised to know that Bangalore was the highest in the lot. Uh, with, with the absorption as high as I think 17% uh, increase on the year, which is which is very strong. Um, so we are, we, we are, I think we have, we have positioned our office assets at the right location because Mumbai, Bangalore was number one, followed by Delhi and followed by Mumbai. So within the top three cities that are listed as the with the most demand in office space, uh, two of the cities are where we are launching these these, these office assets. You had a question from Milan. Uh, to add further to what Sanjay said, uh, Whitefield is connected on Metro now. So uh, demand in Whitefield is expected, uh, demand for commercial office space is expected to go up in Whitefield. Uh, on pending capex on these two projects, I mean, commercial tower is almost ready at Bangalore and we have some spillover capex to be spent. Uh, repurposed mall will be ready in quarter or so, and Pawai um, commercial tower will be ready in one quarter. So all put together, including uh, spill or capex, uh, will be spending around uh, 250 crore rupees. Sure.
And uh, last question, uh, so you exited FI23 with an annual EBITDA of 500 crores and uh, a debt at 22-2300 crores. Uh, so internally, while thinking about expansion and uh, you know greenfield asset acquisition, uh, what sort of a debt EBITDA uh, multiple or metrics are you comfortable with uh, while evaluating fresh projects? That would be my last question. Thank you. So currently, we are, we are aware of the fact that the investment community prefers uh, debt vector ratios to be not too much north of 3.5x, um, and we, we are conscious and we are working towards that. Uh, you see a lot of the capex that we put in play, as I mentioned in my opening statement, is coming into fruition in the next uh, few months. Uh, uh, it's 1,200 crores of capex that we've already spent. Uh, I think a couple of hundred more to be spent on these assets, and we, we are targeting 20% EBITDA by capital employed numbers on these assets. Uh, so clearly, there's, there's enough return that they're going to generate, enough EBITDA to sustain their uh, their costs. Uh, and you got to remember that uh, because there's a couple of these assets are office assets, uh, the the debt will convert to LRDA form there, where the cost of capital will reduce significantly for us. Uh, so we, we we see see a lot of comfort in where we stand today, um, and the accruals that we are creating now will give us. Uh, headroom for growth uh, going forward it beyond the 1,100 rooms that we have in the pipeline right now as we speak uh, and the 2 million square of office space that we have, 2.5 million square office space that we have as prospective uh, office growth. Current out of 2,400 uh, date today I and mean, 1,200 crore is uh, for assets which are not yet operationalized. So we have to compare 500 crore debita with uh, debt of 1200 crore. Sure. Thanks for the clarification, Mr. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Jinesh Zoshi from Prabhudas Leeladar. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I have a bookkeeping question on this uh, inventory write down of uh, 18 crores, which has happened in this quarter uh, due to revision in the uh, project uh, completion cost. Uh, but if I look at uh, the I'm sorry, I'll, I'll have to request you to repeat that because your voice is not coming through clear. Uh, am I audible now? Yeah, that's better. Yeah, yeah. So uh, basically, I had a question on this inventory write down of 18 crores, uh, which is offered in this uh, quarter due to revision in the project uh, completion cost. Uh, but if I look at uh, the current PPT, uh, we have stated that the uh, cost of completion is about uh, 425 crores, uh, which is similar to what uh, we had uh, reported in the last quarter as well. Uh, so just wanted to understand uh, this aspect on uh, write down a bit better. So, Jimish, this is one of the accounting requirements. Uh, whenever these flats, uh, this write down, write off, pertains to uh, flats which were sold five, seven years back, and those were say, sold at very low rate. Uh, now, the cost per square feet based on revised budget is slightly higher than uh, the selling price. Hence, as per uh, accounting standard, we have created this provision for impairment. This is called NRV, net realizable value provision. Uh, sure, uh, for that. Uh, and, and secondly, with respect to uh, the commercial assets, I mean, uh, I, I believe that in the PPT, we have stated that the project in Bangalore of about 0.65 million square feet, uh, the handover has already been commenced. Uh, so the question is, uh, how much area have we been able to lease out uh, so far? And uh, secondly, uh, the other asset which was repurposed very recently, uh, in the last PPT we had stated that the handover might uh, begin in one two, uh, but apparently now it seems to have uh, got postponed uh, to two two FY twenty four. Uh, so any any uh, specific reason out there? And and one follow up on this part is. Uh, uh, pertaining to the uh, LRD debt of about 1,200 crores, which will get converted in FY24, uh, which you mentioned in the opening remarks itself. So what kind of uh, interest cost reduction will we get because of this? So, Janesh, to answer your first part of the question, I'm, and we might have missed something because your voice is still breaking up. Uh, the Bangalore leasing uh, that you were asking for is roughly about 1.5 lakh square feet that we've done with the anchor client. They may be looking at another 
uh, 40,000 square feet more. Uh, and then we've got interest from another three, four clients for taking up the balance, majority of the balance area in the new IT tower. Then there is the mall which is convert, getting converted to office. There we haven't started the leasing activity as yet. There's still some work that is getting completed. And once that is completed, we will open this out to potential tenants. Uh, to answer your uh, uh, LRDA question, uh, Melinda will come in with the cost of capital. Uh, see, I mean, uh, LRD entitlement is to the extent of 6.5 to 7 times of uh, EBITDA or rentals earned. Um, and the cost arbitrage uh, ranges between 50 to 75 basis points. Uh, sure. One last uh, bookkeeping question from my side. Uh, in, the, in the opening remarks, I had guided for a CPEX of about uh, 600 crores in FY24, out of which uh, roughly 280 crores uh, will be on the uh, commercial project in Powai, which is uh, Tower 2. Uh, uh, so can you just highlight what will be the total CPEX uh, 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 for this uh, project and uh, the operational timeline, uh, an indicative operational timeline if you can share. That is the last question from my side. I'll cover the operational timelines. Uh, we've, in fact, just had some updates on that. We expect to start work on site uh, in the middle of this calendar year. Uh, and we're expecting to complete this project in roughly around 33 uh, months. Minute, uh, total project cost. So total uh, capex for commercial office buildings will be around 280 crores which includes Pawai, Bangalore, both phases, I mean, commercial tower as well as repurposed mall. And we'll be spending uh, uh, 40 crore rupees on Pawai, uh, commercial tower, new commercial tower at Pawai. And we'll be spending, just one thing, you must know the total for a project cost for the new co second commercial tower at Pawai. Second commercial tower, including interest and approval cost, will be in the range of uh, uh, 700 crores. Short, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's over three years. That's over three years. Yes, yes. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Sakshi Chabra from Swan Investments. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Congratulations on a great set of numbers. Uh, so my first question was, I wanted to understand that uh, what would be the trajectory for the average room rates for the coming year? So, Sashi, I think the average room rates uh, have been going extremely well. If you look at the history of the average room rates on a month-by-month -month, uh, basis, uh, we have a fair amount of traction building up. And if I was to break it up on a, uh, your your quarter uh, four numbers, January we hit 10,462. February we hit 12,239. And March, we were at 11,160. Uh, so average for the quarter was 11,304. As we said earlier, uh, quarter one and quarter two, we do traditionally see dips uh, and expect some dip on this uh, going forward for the first two quarters of the year. But then the growth in quarter three and quarter four will be higher than what we did in quarter three and quarter four of FY23. Okay, but like, can you give, I mean, uh, approximately can the price increase like by around 10%? So, uh, price increase is already coming in the January to March numbers, Sakshi. Right. The next increase will happen in January next year. Okay, understood. So, uh, and I do not want to give any forward looking average room rates right now. Okay. So, also, I wanted to understand that uh, in uh, Bangalore and in Hawaii, uh, what would be the commercial rates that we could expect? So Bangalore, we are uh, targeting about 60 to 62 rupees a square foot. Okay. And Hawaii, uh, around the 120 to 125 mark. This is on leasable area, and the efficiency of leasable area is what 70 percent. Okay. So we have leasable area of around 1 million in Bangalore, and 0.8 mm -hmm. million in Hawaii. Okay, understood. And the ADD, 88 room in uh, Pune, I understand that uh, you are waiting for the OP. So by when do you think that those rooms can be operational? Uh, within this month. Okay, all right. Thank you. 
we have our next question from the line of rishikesh bhagat from kotak mutual fund please go ahead uh hi uh, thank you for the opportunity so what the few questions firstly when i look at the foreign tourist clearly that stays at 37% fairly below our usual trend uh, now clearly one thing want to understand whether uh, when do you expect normalization of the same and secondly is it 37% have you seen across the most of the markets or probably some markets have already reached to the normalization level and some are lagging significantly so some insight on that one yeah so I'm, i don't have the exact break up but pawai typically our western pawai typically has a lower uh foreigners to indian uh, ratio indians are higher because of the nature of the banquet events that we have their conventions etc which are largely domestic um hyderabad bangalore typically have higher uh, uh, percentages of foreigners in our hotels um and i think that's picking up very rapidly in fact the reason bangalore took longer than most of the markets to pick up was because the foreign business travel took time to come back but now we see that marriage is my uh, field is doing extremely well and that's being driven by foreign travelers coming back so there is a bit of variation across properties and i think it's not even hotel spe- it is not city specific it's more hotel specific um clearly with 772 rooms in west in pawai uh, which is a significant part of the inventory if that is lower that tends to bring the average down uh but married white field will continue to have uh, more uh, majority of the book uh, guests as foreigners over there okay okay the uh, i think if you, it will be great if you continue to publish this information in your investor day it could be really helpful rishikesh just one more input i want to give you that what happened is uh since the uh, pre pandemic time we've also acquired the novotel pune now the novotel pune has primarily domestic guests so the ratio Uh, if we look at it you have to then look at it from the uh, like to like or apple to apple hotel set as against uh, looking at a combined uh, portfolio okay okay yeah so, okay thanks the second question is uh, you spoke about addition of rooms to dukes also now can this addition happen by continuing the operation or do you think we will have to shut down the operation when this addition happens so rishikesh we are also planning to reposition the hotel uh, or the resort through uh, major renovations and the way we planned it is that we'll take 60% of the inventory out uh at that time we'll renovate this inventory of 60% and some five and b areas and use that same time to add the rooms uh, additional rooms so if we take 60% out which means 48 rooms will be out of action but when they come back they'll come back as 48 plus 40 uh, 48 that 96 rooms which is significantly higher 20% higher than what we have current inventory and that's when the balance 32 rooms are going to renovation okay and the last question on the 600 crore capex guidance so does it capture your any capex or likely capex on iroli as well as delhi or do you think that could be further upside on the capex as and when that would yeah rishikesh i mean uh, our 600 capex also includes um, aeroli uh, uh dukes uh, renovation as well as some capital expenditure on um, new delhi hotel okay thank you thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen in order to ensure management is able to answer queries from all participants kindly restrict your questions to two at a time you may join by the queue for follow up questions We'll take our next question from the line of Rajiv B from Dan Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, Afun uh, sir, and thanks for the opportunity and congratulations on great sort of numbers. Uh, so on uh, your capex bit, um, if I remember right, uh, your capex for I five twenty three was planned to be close to five hundred odd crores, right? You have done and you have done something like five hundred eighty seven odd crores. So uh, have we uh, have we uh, shot higher on some of these or? You know this power power uh, tower two is basically uh, has got some capex in a five twenty three done as well. You no, know, so uh, we have uh, all our uh, capex uh, our projects are in within their defined cost budgets. Uh, but I'll let Milan give you the breakup of uh, the increase if any is worth. The difference is what from fifty sixty crores that could be on account of acquisition dues. Yes, yes. So I want to explain that. So total capex. Uh, of 600 crores for financial year 
uh, includes uh, uh, 160 crore rupees uh, duke acquisition cost and the balance was for project. So maybe... So if you look at slide uh, 20 in your presentation, you will actually find some of the parts on the debt over there, where you'll find that the CapEx uh, that we put in for Dukes is 158, 159 crores, and then there's 440 crores towards uh, other growth projects. Uh, and that sort of uh, yeah. will uh, give you the breakup. So Raju, I mean the difference of our guidance of 500 and actual 440 crore spend, and something is lying as craters, which will be there in the next few days. Sure. And also on the dial thing, have we finalized the the flag there? In the sense, this will be domestic or an international? Uh, uh, we should have that in place in the next few days. Uh, sure. And in uh, in one of your slides, the timeline of uh, the power uh, uh, second tower is uh, FI twenty six. Uh, it shows, and yeah, you said you know the capex is three years. Uh, yeah, so initially I was just uh, was, so it's going to be three years because FY24 is also getting consumed, right? So it's 24, 25, and 26. 33 months is the total project uh, time. Earlier in NBSRs that we we might start around uh, October of this year, but it looks like we'll be able to start around two or three months earlier. Um, uh, and but we we are. Uh, we believe that in 33 to 36 months' time, we'll complete this project. So end of FY26 is when we see uh, this completion. Sure. Uh, thanks a lot. That's what we Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Siddesh, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, congratulations on the revenue. Uh, I I would like to inquire about the breakdown of our capital expenditure by project and property for the current year, and also request information on the anticipated timeline for when we can expect to see the effects of this expenditure reflected in the revenue levels. So I'll let uh, Milit first give you the break of the capex expenditure, and he'll give you uh, uh, completion dates also, so that you can get a sense of that. So Siddesh, 240 crore rupees will spend on Pawai commercial and Bangalore commercial. And both are expected to be operational in uh, first quarter of, first or second quarter of FY23. 24. Uh, sorry, FY24. Uh, 200 crore rupees will spend for hotels, uh, which includes Dial, Dukes, Aeroli, and some spillover capex for our uh, Western Hotel and uh, No Hotel Hotel. Uh, we will undertake some renovation at our existing properties uh, and we'll spend around 65 crore rupees on that. So all put together, our capex plan is off for 600 crore for the year. But Milan, that's for this year. He wants to know what's the project-wise capex plan. Okay. See, our total capex plan for next five years is around 2,000 crore rupees. Out of 2,000, 1,000 crore rupees is for um, commercial office buildings, which includes new commercial tower uh, at Pawai. Uh, 750 crore rupees uh, for hotels, which includes Dial, Dukes, Aeroli, and addition of 140 keys in Bangalore. And uh, we'll spend around 125 crore rupees on renovation of existing property. Okay, and uh, while doing renovation at Duke's retreat, are we expecting any uh, effects on the existing room capacity? Sorry, I missed that. Could you repeat your question, please? While doing renovations at the Duke's property, while expanding the capacity at Duke's, are we expecting any restrictions on the current room capacity available over there? So as I explained earlier, we will take 60% of the inventory out in phase one and operate 40% of the inventory. Uh, and when that 60% comes back, which is 48 rooms, it will also come back with the expected 48 to 50 additional rooms that we're planning there. So it will come back as 96 to 98 rooms, which will be 20% higher than the total capacity right now. And subsequent to that, the 32 rooms will get renovated. We're going to do this in two phases, Sadesha. This is still being worked out. We're on the drawing board stage. Uh, let us come back with, to you with a far more firmer plan uh, by the end of this quarter. Perfect. Thank you.
Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Vikas Ahuja from Antique Stock Broking. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, thanks for taking my question again. Uh, so just uh, one uh, book keeping question. This is from Milan. And so this 1.8 million square feet uh, commercial we are planning to add in FI24 and FI25 and other. Uh, what is the uh, occupancy assumptions we could uh, work with? Because you talk about the Q1, Q2, uh, you know, the Pawai and Whitefield, uh, Bangalore will come. But for the whole year, what kind of uh, uh, occupancy assumption should should we work work with? See, uh, because in our financial modeling. Uh, and group has more than 33 million uh, commercial office space. So we take 3% perpetual vacancy. So we, we are going to ease that more about the build up, how this is occupancy going to build up there. Okay. So uh, uh, Bangalore, we expect uh, in next six months, Bangalore commercial tower, uh, next six months we'll lease out around uh, 85%. Uh, by March, I mean, uh, we should have revenue kicking in. Uh, Bangalore repurposed mall uh, should start from uh, next six months. So more than 75% of that will be leased out um, in next six months. And Powai uh, build-up will be 25% uh, in March 24, 25%. Uh, I mean, this is revenue earning. Uh, after uh, uh, fit out period, 25% it should in give the leasing timelines, not the revenue timelines here, yeah. because you anyway straight line, straight line your accounting, right? Yeah. So leasing timelines by September 23, we should lease out more than 25% in Powai. Uh, by December, additional 25%, and balance 47% uh, uh, by March or so. Okay, uh, thank you. And 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 one uh, lastly, I mean, do we have any uh, land parcel left to add any more commercial, or do we have exhausted all with uh, you know adding by by adding three million square feet by end of FY26? So largely, it will take care of all the land parcel we have. I, am I correct on that? So yeah, before we go to get to this question with you, I just want to clarify on page seven while Milan was reading out the timeline. I realize this is a typo. Uh, that 0.8 million square foot of Cygnus uh, Hawaii Tower 2 says FY25. That's an error. Uh, that will actually get completed, uh, as you said, FY20. Uh, in uh, three years from uh, starting of middle of this year. So please factor that in. Uh, so uh, please go ahead with the new question, please. Uh, the, the next one was regarding the land parcel for adding uh, any other commercial. We have exhausted all, right? Or, or do we have sure. any more? Because, as you know, this commercial assets that we're developing are all in existing land parcels where our hotels exist, exist. And the whole idea was to sweat the real estate uh, of that particular hotel land parcel to, and build complementary assets that complement the hotel in terms of demand uh, uh, expansion. So that's worked very favorably wherever we've looked at it. Uh, and we expect to uh, this to contribute significantly as these offices get operationalized. Uh, coming to your question whether we have any more land parcels, look, as of as things stand right now with the FSI that is available in hand, once we complete the second tower in Hawaii, we are likely to sort of uh, exhaust all FSI that would potentially be available. Uh, I've also shared in the past that we don't have any desire to uh, acquire a land parcel to build a standalone office asset. I must, however, add that in Kora Bangla, which is which has residential towers, um, there is we were able to carve out one extra land parcel where we are building an office tower, not very large, one and a half lakh square feet only, which is the only uh, asset that we will build and uh, sell on a strata basis. Beyond that, nothing else. Sir. Uh, as we stand right now. Sure, sure, sir. Thanks, and best of, best, best of luck for Q1. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Paresh Shah from Pranathir Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, I have uh, one question about uh, the debt which is required for CAPEX 
uh, are you planning to do any qits uh, to reduce either the debt or for the capex plan you envisage so let so me are you trying to bring in equity uh, to reduce the uh, risk element going forward because i have been hearing lot of uh, you know concerns or rather uh, little bit of uh, anxiety for uh, debt related to our company so parish bhai thank you for the question um, i'll let milin come in with the exact numbers but let me give you an overview um, our debt is going to go down very rapidly in the next couple of years uh, because of the operationalized assets that we have the lrda effect uh, and the fact that um, a lot of the projects are coming to culmination as we speak now uh, having said that uh, right now there is no plan to raise any fresh equity in the company because we really don't need it um, you got to remember equity is far more expensive than debt for any company uh, and from that perspective uh, we'd like to optimize the balance sheet for most optimal returns and we'd like to leverage to an extent that is most efficient and that's our thesis and we continue to stick to that so okay. uh, we have debt of around 2400 crore today we expect it will peak out to 2650 and then it will start reducing uh, we have koramanda residential project which will, will starts open it for sales and this is expected to generate cash of 600 crores in next 3 years which will be used to fund our uh, uh capex in the future years and we believe internal accruals which we are expected to generate in next 3 4 years will take care of our capex okay so uh, from this reply one more question which comes to my mind is uh, uh, the commercial uh, leasing uh, part what we have are you exploring to you know uh, get a good value for the shareholders in terms of putting it in rit kind of an instrument so parish bhai i think as an opportunity they it exists at this point of time we see no need to do that these are going to be high yielding assets for chale hotels absolutely uh, and and there's no reason to uh, to uh, pass you know uh, transfer them to a reit uh, when we are getting uh, very good returns from them so right now no such plans but at, at any point of time suppose there is an opportunity for a large platform acquisition in hospitality space this remains as a available currency for us to monetize at the given time okay so uh, do you think that the, you are looking for a proper uh, kind of a lease rental then it kicks in or uh, as of now you have not uh, thought on this no we we are we are expecting a, a significant amount of ebitda contribution to come from these uh, assets uh, as we shared earlier i mean you could remember that out of the total 3 million square foot 2 million square foot lies in the high uh, rent yielding city of mumbai uh, and 1 million in in bangalore and whitefield uh, and if you really uh, do the math on it you will realize that the returns are extremely healthy on the investment over here uh, and there's no reason for us to look at them adversely from any angle no i am i am thinking from the uh, uh, value uh, uh, creation for the shareholder because many times when it is captured in a company in consolidation the value doesn't get uh, discovered for uh, this kind of instrument that was my only concern uh, so a big the flow through is going to create shareholder value for sure uh, and it's significantly big the flow through if you do just just do just do the math at uh, at the number that we shared with you and you must remember why did we do this there's a genesis to this the genesis to this is that number one we want to de risk the cyclic and cyclicality of the hospitality industry rental and annuity business tends to de risk that in fact uh, during the covid period the fact that we were able to report a bit of positive results in our company for every quarter during that year it was on the back of rental yields that we were getting from assets on the annuity business um so I, i think this this is a good edge uh to to any risk that we may have in hospitality people diversify in various forms this is our form of diversification and not only are we diversifying and hedging the risk we are also creating significant value for shareholders in uh, form of uh, ebitda earnings
Okay, sir. Thank you, sir, for your uh, reply and wishing you very best. And we are really happy with the strategies what you have put in play for the shareholders. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Kindly restrict your questions to two at a time. We have a question from the line of Suman Kumar from Motila Loswal. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Can you talk about uh, G20 benefit uh, to Sale in uh, past couple of quarters? Hi, Suman. Uh, so look, I think every hotel company has had the benefit of G20 business. It comes in two forms. One, direct bookings that come to your hotel. And the second form is where other hotels get sold out, creating compression in the market, which leads to your hotels enjoying the benefit of other bookings being diverted to you, and typically at a much higher rate. So we've had the benefit on both counts uh, at all cities, uh, whether it was Hyderabad, Bangalore, Pune, or Mumbai. So any quantification or some uh, the occupancy rate uh, or any market uh, dynamic change in uh, say Mumbai and uh, I can go around uh, quantifying it, but you know it won't serve the purpose because even if my competitor takes the G20 business, the spillover effect to me is very positive. And then how do you quantify that? So therefore, I would rather not quantify. All I can say is it has helped all cities. And I want to highlight one thing here: G20 is not about just this year. The, the uh, you know having these few events across the country over the year is is the smaller benefit of G20. I think the bigger benefit of G20 is the um, the mileage that India is getting from the investor community and the global community uh, to see India in a different light in a more positive way, which is going to be beneficial to us in the long term. Can you talk about, uh, is there any decline or uh, some slowdown in uh, foreign customer mix for uh, in Q4? Not at all. Right. Gone up. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Nihal Jam from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you so much and congratulations on this performance. Uh, my first question was on, on the foreign mix that you've given also. Uh, the number, as I said, is 37% for Q4, but this includes the impact of maybe no hotel getting commission, which is mainly a domestic driven uh, hotel. Would it be possible to give a ballpark sense of how this number is if we do it on a like to like basis versus pre COVID? I'm afraid I don't have that number, but it is lower. As we said, 90, uh, the, the foreign. Uh, uh, airline traffic, passenger load, is only 90% recovery to pre-pandemic time, so there will be a reduction. Uh, but look, at the end of the day, we are not looking at whether it's foreign or Indian. Our preference is for anyone who gives us a premium to our, on our room rates. And if today the domestic market is giving us a, a, a premium to the room rates, we would, we would go in favor of them. So it's not as if it is 37% only because that's, that was the only business available in the market. It could also be that you displayed some of the foreign business which uh, with the higher yielding uh, domestic business and that's what led to our growth. I can give a clear example on that. The airline crew that we used to have earlier was significantly higher than what we have now. And they used to typically come at a lower rate yes. and uh, they were in large volumes, large numbers. So from that perspective, uh, we've, uh, uh, I think we've been able to optimize our uh, average room rates and thereby the rep parts. A quick number that we were looking for earlier, Bangalore is actually back to 66% of its uh, guests being foreigners in the month of March 23, and Hyderabad is at 50%. And, and was this the number pre-COVID also, 66 and 50 for Bangalore and Hyderabad? The 66%, Hyderabad was marginally higher, I think it was 55 or so. So, so just one clarification here was that uh, in the early participant hours that the number moved from 41 to 37 from Q3 to Q4. Ideally, the Jan to March period, if, I, if you look at the India FTA calendar, sees more uh, foreign arrivals. Not sure how it works out for you, but is there anything worth noting there that the 41 moving to 37 in terms of the mix of customers? No, I think what has happened is the occupancy has gone up in general. So therefore, you're seeing that ratio is skewed. But if you look at the uh, the, the occupancy, it's gone up almost 700 bips. 700, 900 bips. 900 bips is the occupancy improvement. So that could have led to this uh, uh, change. I don't think the absolute number has gone uh, down. It's actually probably stayed slightly above only. 
counting it is one final question is by uh, my colleague that the absolute number is 62000 room nights for both quarters which is exactly the same okay that that's it this final final question sanjay was that on the cost days uh, how do you see fy24 is it a normalized cost base only because if we are in a strong cycle is there a case for higher than expected inflation and a lot of line items or just your sense of the same so um i don't see any reason why the cost will go up uh, from where they are today i think we must highlight here that our in the last quarter our uh, variable cost as a percentage to revenue was 3% lower than q3 uh, so if anything i think inflation is cooling off a bit uh, and similarly fixed costs were also 300 bps lower than q3 in both fronts the uh, cost percentage to revenue seems to be more efficient in q4 than it was in q3 uh, we don't have any significant um, uh, insight into any further inflationary pressure on us we had to add further i mean our two major cost shares payroll we were at 12% against uh, at a percentage to revenue against 15% pre pandemic and hlp it like power uh, it was at 5.4 against uh, uh, 7% pre pandemic so these major costs we are bringing it down these are two largest costs that we have in operating costs that we have in the understood uh, that was it from my side wish you all the best thank you thank you thank you as there are no further questions i would now like to hand the conference over to mr sanjay sethi for closing comments over to you sir thank you ma'am uh, thank you everyone for joining us for the call uh, uh i want to sort of reassure you that we are extremely excited about uh chalet hotels uh, especially by the fact that we've got a significant amount of capex work in progress which is now coming to fruition which will now contribute to our operating numbers um and uh, in addition to that we've got some more projects that are coming online which will again add uh, you know create value for our shareholders